welcome to episode number two of our brand new podcast slash show, which we are calling the Down South Photo Show. And uh, I would like to say g'day to Cameron Blake down in Tasmania. G'day, Cam. G'day, Brens. How are you going? Another, Very we, well, thank we you. Made it, we made it to episode two. Wow. Two in yeah. a row. Who'd have thought? It's not like the Carlton Football Club, but that's okay. We won't mm. go there. Jeez. No, I didn't think we were going to introduce any football talk into this, but there you go. You've done it now. I, I think we had to. Anyway, okay. moving on. Yeah, hello. I'm, I'm good. How are you today? Yeah, Doing very well, well mate. Very yeah. well. Excellent. Um, like to give a shout out to everyone who listened or watched mm. the first episode last week. Um, we got a great response, wouldn't you say, Cam? Uh, yeah, I was pretty much actually blown away by it. I, I thought we might only get maybe a handful of listeners and, and probably some emails, but... Uh, yeah, I think I thought we did really well, and um, yeah, thanks very much for tuning in. And it was good. The feedback's mm. been great. Uh, people seem to be enjoying it so far, and I guess yep. the pressure's on us to keep up how awesome it's going to be. <laughs> well, I think that's why the majority of the uh, comments that we got were great because I think people like the re relaxed nature of the yeah. of the show. Um, yeah. We do like to sort of bounce off each other, and we also yeah. do like to talk talk a heap of crap. So yeah, um, we're experts. <laughs> I'm very good at it, that's for sure. A um, couple of things about um, about the show itself. If you are on YouTube and you're watching this on YouTube, please do us a little favour. There's a subscribe button down there. Mm. It is completely free to subscribe to a YouTube channel. It's not going to cost you one brass farthing. So if you can hit that subscribe button, that would be awesome because it helps mm. to get our show out there. It helps populate the YouTube algorithm by people subscribing. Also, there's a thumbs up button down there. And the bell icon so if you hit the bell icon it means you'll be notified when we do pop up a new episode on the channel mm -hmm. um and it, and it just helps up it helps us as well to see how many people are watching how many people are subscribing and gives us a little bit of encouragement yeah it strokes the ego a little bit well that's what we're all about <laughs> <laughs> yeah we don't uh, don't get enough of that so no, no, uh, that's it. um so i wanted to just also um talk a little bit about just the the brilliance of the name that is the down south photo show yeah. um how did geez hey how did we come up with that yeah look um, it, it was hours in the making it, <laughs> it literally was hours in the making if we go well we did <laughs> we did bounce a few names around and yeah. of course we wanted to lean on the fact that the young man over there is down in tasmania and yeah. i am in based in southern victoria in ocean grove cam in hobart me in ocean grove uh, so we're both down south and of course we are Australians so we are always referred to as being down south so we just thought the down south photo show why not got a yeah. good ring to it it does I think it's got an excellent ring to it um, I wonder if we've got any international viewers and listeners from that last one well if oh. you are listening to us from outside yeah. Australia if you want to hit the uh, little thumbs up or if yeah. you're whatever you can do on the medium in which you're watching hit a thumbs up leave a comment mm. say good day uh, it was really cool last week when we asked where people were and, hey, presto, all these comments came up. I'm here yeah. and I'm there. It was, no, it was really good to see. There was a lot of um, lockdown Melbourne I saw on the comments we, we there. Did have, we did have a lot of <laughs> lockdown Melbourne, uh, yeah. which is no longer lockdown. So no, that's good unlocked. to see. Unlocked Melbourne. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so um, that's how – well, yeah, as I say, we came up with a name. It was pretty simple, really. And also yeah. the fact that the words photo and show – have O's in them that we can turn into little aperture yeah. um, logos as well. I mean, you know, yeah, right. um, and Cam, quick shout out to your friend who yeah. did the little caricatures uh, of us. Yeah, Rob, who uh, I think his uh, ad handle is uh, Spedzy, S-P-E-D-S-Y on Instagram. He does he does heaps of uh, cartoon drawings and uh, caricatures and things like that. And he's done a little bit of work with me on another thing I did. Uh, which we'll probably bring up at some stage in an episode. Um, yep. So, yeah, shout out to Rob. Thank you so much. He, he's just one of those – he's a Melbourne guy as well, so he's a local for you sort of. Yep. Um, but he's just one of those guys where you say, hey, I need this, and there's no BS in between. It's just like, I need this, and this is what I'm looking for. And he, like literally the, the logo we came up with for the show, it was one email. He goes, what do you think about this? I'm like, done. So Perfect. Send me an invoice. So <laughs> but, we'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> but we'll, we'll chuck his handle. Uh, it's – if. If anything, it's just really cool to look at how talented people can be when they draw and 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 bring up things like that. So we'll put a link in the in the show notes to his uh, Instagram account. It's uh, it's really cool. He's got some really cool characters and yeah. It's uh, so yeah, yeah. Thanks to him and uh, yeah, I think it looks good and I think Great the name work, the name works and uh, yeah. Here we are. We are the Down South Photo Show. 
we are the Down South Photo Show um, website coming soon, I would imagine as well at some point, but uh, yeah. we'll get there on that. Uh, so pretty much every week we'll, we'll discuss a little bit about what's going on with Cam and myself uh, with what we've been doing uh, in regards to the photography industry and the, the businesses in which we run. So Cam, how was your week? Uh, my week was pretty cool. It's gone pretty quick from that last episode, I must admit. Um, it has. It has. Uh, so what have I been up to this week? Um, I actually did a photo shoot um, of a young lady out at uh, the historic township of Richmond, which is... Oh, fantastic. Uh, if people don't know where Richmond is, it's about 20 minutes out of Hobart. Beautiful old town. It's got the Australia's oldest bridge. Uh, it's got an old jail there and all those kind of things. So really back in the, the late 1800s type of style, sandstone buildings and everything's heritage listed out there. But uh, so I went out there with Grace, who's a young lady, does a bit of acting and uh, modelling down here. Um, we actually did a photo shoot together. I was commissioned to do a photo shoot for a boot company. Um, talk about going off landscape and doing weird stuff. Um, oh, a, boot, a boot company called, I think they're called Kadar Boots. Uh, they're okay. based in the middle of nowhere at the arse end of nowhere in WA. Right. Uh, and... Uh, another photographer friend, Paul, over in WA, put the, the owner onto me and they wanted to get a photo of these cowboy boots, a picture of your cowboy boots, uh, and they, they actually glow in the dark. They've got all this uh, glow-in-the-dark blue stitching all through the boots, and they, they are really cool. Like I thought to myself, glow-in-the-dark boots sounds a bit sort of corny, um, but she sent these out and I needed a model, and, and Grace was uh, nice enough to put her hand up. But this uh, owner of the business wanted these glow in the dark boots with bioluminance, that's the glow in the, the, glow in the dark water stuff that goes in the water, yes. and it ended Aurora in the background of this shot. Sure, yeah. easy. Yeah. Consider it done. No problem. So that was, pretty much the, <laughs> that was pretty much the conversation I had with her. I'm like, look, I love the idea. Like, the, the concept is brilliant, the boots look great. Um, but the idea of lining all that up is, is going to be really unique. But we got around it. Um, we ended up doing a beautiful uh, sort of sun, sun just after sunset uh, down at a coastal shop, um, and we actually got some bioluminance in the water as well. No, so, you did not. Yeah, there is. There's bio, and, and it was actually the, the, it was actually really, really talking about um, sort of getting commissioned for work and time frames. Um, there was no real time frame from the owner. She said, look, we're releasing these boots sort of early this year. And uh, so I had a few months to do it. I'm like, oh, piece of, piece of cake. I'll, I'll have months to do this. And uh, we went through a stage of having all this bioluminance around Hobart and around yep. southern Tasmania every week, yep. every week for months. And then nothing. Yep. As soon as I got the boots, nothing. All the, all the tires went differently. All the weather went differently. So <laughs> we, we got there in the end. And it's a stunning show. We might, we'll put it up on the, we'll put it up somewhere so people can see yeah. it. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to overlay it like magic right now over oh, as yeah. we're speaking. There it is. See, Look, you know, just like that. And for those of you listening on the podcast, well, you're going to have to click the link below to see it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And don't be afraid to go buy the boots because um, this lady actually uh, imports, exports, exports out to the US uh, into places like Texas and stuff like that. She's cool. massively big in the US. But anyway, back to Grace. Um, she needed to do some a bit more of an updated portfolio. So we went out there and... Um, did a few shots, uh, spent about an hour and a half wandering around. Um, just a really cool, cool chick, real, real relaxed, easy to work with, a little bit quirky like us, like just a bit of a sense of humour. and Something uh, you enjoy doing? Yeah, I don't, I don't mind doing some model shots. Um, yeah, especially if the model's really relaxed. Like yeah. sometimes models can be really uptight or really nervous or, you know, maybe new to the game and, um, and that makes your job a bit harder because you've got to try and relax them and make them you know, relax a bit more and make a bit laugh a bit more and yep. get a bit more ease, at ease. But um, yeah, I don't mind doing it. Um, I've done a few model shoots over the years and um, yeah, um, oh, it's, it's good fun. And if you can get, uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in natural lighting, doing portraits. Yep. I'm not a big studio portrait yep. person. Yep. Um, so we had a really good time. Um, so I handed over about, I don't know, about 30 or 40 images of her today. She's happy with them. She's posting them all over her social media. Um, Fantastic. So, and then we're probably going to do another shoot. She wants to do uh, another shoot with sort of dresses and indoor black and white type of stuff. Yeah. So um, if you can picture Audrey Hepburn, black and white, sort of cool hairdo, uh, really cool dress. This girl looks very similar to her. Oh, fantastic. Um, so it makes my job real easy. <laughs> a little bit of inspiration. So inspiration came easily. Like you just, you yeah. Know, you, you, well, you had a brief as well, I suppose, which always helps. It wasn't just, hey, go and take us some photos. No. I no. mean, I know from my my personal experience on a few times where I've shot commercially as well, I love it when they say, this is what we need. 
Yeah. But you've also got that creative license either side of that to yeah. work to work in, you know, what you want to present or how you think the product should be presented. Yeah. So, and I, I must admit that's, that's something I do like about commercial work in a way, especially that boot job. Um, like the owner is like, look, I don't know anything about photography. I don't know anything about fire luminance. I don't need. Oh, am I there? I've lost. I've lost the screen. Oh but goodness me! Oh, no. We'll just keep going then. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, she said, "Look, I don't know anything about photography. I don't know anything about bioluminance." And she said, "But I know, I know my boots, and I know they're going to look good doing this and that. So can you, yep. can you do this?" So uh, that was good. And with Grace the other day, she sent me just a few um, screenshots of images that she'd like to look of, and um, away we went. So it was pretty good. It was um, easy done, really. Yeah, nice one. Um, do you need a minute to get your background back I'm up? I'm going to get my background back up. <laughs> so what, I got signed out of something. Okay, yeah. well, um, by recording. the magic, by the magic of look at that. See, it's back, back. It's so you now have a now, um, which is actually quite good. I'm, um, I'm glad that that actually happened because I want to ask you where your background photo was taken. You see, that's why I did it. I signed myself I know. out of account just to I do know. a segue. Away well, you did well. Photo shoots into you did well. Yeah, thanks. Um, so my background, this is uh, one, of, one of the probably one of my favourite places here in Tassie at the moment. I'm really addicted to this location. So this is up in the northwest coast of Tasmania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is the Tarkine region. So this is up near, this is actually Sarah Ann Rocks. It's a location along the western coast. Um, it just, it's just wild, rugged, battered, uh, yeah. cra crazy sort of coastline. And um, relatively untouched, I would imagine. Yeah, look, there's little shacks all sort of spotted around the background uh, and on the back of the dunes and things like that. And there is a, a couple of towns up and up and down from here, but they're not huge towns. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a, mostly untouched. Um, it's a very controversial area as well. Uh, there's lots of logging and mining that happened in the Tarkine. So the Tarkine, you've got like a coastline, then you've got like a bit of space in between, then you go into the, the giant sort of cool temperate forests. So there's always something going on up there with protests and um you know controversial things going on but uh the Tarkine is beautiful it's a really amazing coastline uh, and i'm yep. not i'm not a huge uh, i'm not a huge coastal photographer i'm more i'm more of a mountains and landscape rivers kind of guy uh where i know you are you're you're mostly you know do a lot of coastal stuff because yep. clearly you live down there but yep. um so yeah it's it's good to get out there and it's just a bit different to that normal sort of coastal shot you get yeah, no, it's cool. Well, as you can see, I'm still rocking the same background as last week because I had a what granddad that, moment and couldn't yeah, work out. It? Well, yeah, I couldn't work out how to change it in time for us to start the recording. And mm. I'm also coming to you in four by three. Yeah, you are. Four by three rocks. Like it's all the a, cool kids do. It's so 2008. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, could, I could even say that, you know, the hipsters like the film and stuff. It films three, two. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm so four you, three. I'm Mr. Olympus. Yeah, you're really hanging. You're sort of micro, micro, I'm micro four thirds. Yeah, you are. Um, right. See, that's that's pretty much what uh, I've been going over this week. Oh, there was the um, the Dark Mofo festivals just finished down here as well. Um, now bring this on. This looks fantastic. So you've sent me some photos, which I, I will uh, also endeavour to overlay uh, for probably, YouTube yeah, viewers. Probably, and again, there'll be a link below. Right I am actually right. looking at them right now, and uh, you've shown me three photos which look fantastic. The yeah. one, the one that I like the most out of the three there um, is the second one, which will be in the middle of the screen now oh, yeah, for yeah. you guys watching. Yeah. Um, that's got that's got this uh, last Jedi look about it, mate. It does, yeah. Um, so for those that don't know, Dark Mofo, uh, everyone's probably heard of the Mona Gallery, the uh, Museum of New Art, whatever it is down here. Huge gallery just out of Hobart gets tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of visitors in a normal year, not in COVID times. Um, but each year they put on a dark mofo, which is like a huge winter. It's almost like a, like not a medieval, but like a mid sort of winter type of um, festival. And it is crazy. Like the whole town uh, around Hobart just gets turned into this incredible night sort of festival. Uh, and there's all these light displays on and there's all these weird, wacky things going on. Um, so I went out the other night for a bit of a walk around. And, you, and the thing is what I like about it, it's at night time, but you can just sort of blend in. Like usually if you yep. walk around Hobart, you know, there's always someone taking photos of Mount Wellington or something like that. But here you literally just mold into the darkness. So no one knows you're there. You're just walking around. So that like that shot you're talking about that we're looking at now, hmm. um, you can get those shots because people don't know you're taking them because it is, it's pitch black in there and it's just, you've just got this red light coming on. So 
No, nah, they're, they're fantastic. It's really cool. It looks like a, a great event to photograph and I would imagine would come with its own challenges as well, being incredibly low light photography, which, of course, when you put yourself out to take these photos, it all helps, doesn't it, with... Uh, yeah. You know, you get. I, I bet you learned something while you were taking those photos. Yeah, and, and you do. Um, and like I, I shot these on my Olympus. Uh, it's at the M One Mark Three and nice. the Twenty Five One Two. So straight away before I went out there, I thought I need a really fast lens. So when, when we're talking fast lenses, we're talking wide apertures and letting heaps of light in. So One Point Two um, was perfect because you can hand hold these uh, ISO sort of four hundred hand hold and walk around. There's no tripod needed. You can really just, you know, um, sort of get all the shots you want handheld without setting up. And, you know, you can't capture all those moments, which is like a couple of those shots there where there's just people there. But um, yeah, 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 it was, um, it was good fun. And uh, yeah. yeah, I learned that uh, I was actually under exposing here for like three stops. Yeah. The, these red lights that are all sort of prominent around, uh, it's called paint the town red and all yeah. the buildings go red, everything's red. And it just overpowers the, the the shot sometimes so I, I heavily underexpose just to silhouette everything apart from that red so yeah, it's good fun though yep. we'll have to um you'll have to yep. come down one day and, but anyone it's, coming down if you're going to come down to hobart if they do it again next year <laughs> which hopefully they will you need to book months in advance like, like hobart is booked out for a month of this whole festival so okay uh, is is it is it any coincidence that it coincides with the winter solstice or is that that's not a coincidence it is just purely, it's purely based around that so right okay um, i thought there might have been some kind of connection yeah so they do a, a winter solstice uh swim so one of the beaches down here they get thousands of people nude up and just go for a swim at, at dawn so um actually, right. actually yeah, it's, it's well <laughs> if i if i remember rightly what i, I remember what they wrote it was three degrees down here, the air temperature was two or three degrees when they did it, wow. and the water temperature was what twelve or thirteen degrees. Yeah, so, so it would have been lovely. It would have been lovely. It would have been what they call spanner water. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Google that one. Okay. Is it, look in the Urban Dictionary for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. what about your week? What have you been doing? What's happened in the last week with you? Well, we've been um, lucky enough that um, people in Melbourne were allowed to travel down our way. So mm. Friday night um, saw traffic jams heading down to Geelong oh, yeah. and down to the surf coast So um, yes. and the Ballerine Peninsula where I am. A lot of people around on Friday and Saturday, so both my shops were nice and busy, which was great, yeah, selling, a, selling a bit of landscape photography of my own, but uh, a lot nice. of people printing their photos and that sort of stuff too. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. that was good. Um, feels good to be back in business again um yeah, and yeah it's it's been been tough but you know we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get there with that um but it's just nice to see things starting to return back to normal still masking up in the shop of course yeah. um got the qr code check-in going 24 7 of course yeah how good are um, qr codes if that's one well, thing covid's brought out is qr codes are, well the funny thing is cam my in my shop i've been using qr codes for well almost since i opened yeah. to get people you can point your camera at a QR code and it'll connect to my Wi-Fi. Then yeah. you point it, point your camera at the QR code that's on the photo printing kiosk yeah. and that connects your phone to the kiosk. So, um, and you're, for you're ages, bit, I was trendy. trying to, I was trying to teach people how to use these QR codes for now. Yeah. It's just, so uh, yes, yeah. so if there was, if something good came from this, um, yeah, from okay. the pandemic, it was that minuscule little bit of trivia that people can now use QR codes in my shop. Um, yeah, good. One thing yeah, I wanted to mention was today we had some southern right whales off the coast um, mm. right out here in basically that photo you see behind me, basically right there. Right, there okay. Some um, cool. southern right whales uh, off Ocean Grove and 13th Beach, which is just around the peninsula there. Are, are they heading south? Are they heading which, Are they heading down my way or are they heading away from me? I don't know. Sorry. So, I, know, know. I, I know there is a, there is a migrating season, clearly. And yes. I don't know, we get them off the east coast down here um, out, the, out of Wineglass Bay and Fraser Bay yeah. National Park. And then we get them yeah. also around the bottom near Bruny Island. Yes. Yeah. So, um, um, now, do you get southern rights or humpbacks or both? I don't know. So we're, we're getting into marine biology that clearly we both are qualified. My understand, my understanding is that humpbacks make their way north from Antarctic waters via the Tassie coast. All right. Yeah, yeah. And end up end up in Queensland at uh, places like Harvey Bay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they, they go up to Harvey Bay where it's safe for them to carve. Yeah, okay. And then they hook it all the way back down to Antarctica again. Yeah. So, and they carve in August, September, October. Right. So it'd be probably around this time of year where they're starting to so you head do up know north part of the world this. as well. 
You know, you know a lot about. I know that. a little bit. I went on a whale watching cruise a couple of years ago. Took the kids out on a whale watching cruise nice. uh, out of Harvey Bay, and yeah. uh, took the camera with. Got, got a couple of nice photos as well. I've done. A, um, I've yeah, done so a couple anyway, of, uh, I've kind of done a couple of little boat tours off the bottom of Tassie here. Uh, there's a really cool operator down here, and I've seen every marine animal you can think of: dolphins, yep. seals, penguins walruses whatever the hell they are whatever it's down here never seen a whale <laughs> and really? it, it does my head and every like two days later you'll see all these photos flash up on social media yeah. oh huge yeah. whale yeah. reaching i'm like really so yeah there was a few um this. there was a few photos chucked up on local social media here yeah, uh, cool. that's why i know about it but unfortunately yeah. i was tied up at the shop and couldn't get the camera and rush down to the beach to get any photos but hey next time mm. we'll do that it is a good thing um, though. Um, i think one thing on that is it's good to see it just means the, the water's healthy and you know, they're, they're, they're safe and they're migrating. That's, yeah. one, that's one thing I think it's great is that, you know, they're still migrating around and giving birth to more whales. It's awesome. Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's, it's very, very cool to see. Um, mm. And You're lucky. Uh, we are lucky. We live yeah. in a great part of the world where that kind of stuff comes to us. Yeah, Pretty cool. Um, all right, so moving on a little bit. That's what's been happening with our week. Um, now, Cam's about to make me and probably some of you very jealous mm -hmm. as well. Because Cameron is about to hit the road and he's off to yeah. the Flinders Rangers camp. I am about to hit the road. I take off uh, very, very soon. Um, I'm hoping that everything stays open and no lockdowns. And uh, I've got to go um, on the boat and then drive through Victoria. I'm not allowed to stop in Victoria if I want to go into South Australia without having to quarantine. So um, it's definitely a new uh, new spin on travelling around and doing you know scouting for photographic workshops and things like that. You've it's just another element of things to take note of. Uh, so yeah, I'm heading off up to the Flinders, Flinders Ranges. Uh, I'm planning to spend about a week up that way, or maybe a week and a half. Um, so my idea is I'm, I'm going to put on a Flinders Ranges workshop uh, sometime in 2022, probably similar sort of time frame around about sort of June, July. Um, but um, I'm not a big fan of people that run workshops but don't scout beforehand. Uh, I think that's just too much pressure on someone to go up there and try and BS your way around a location you've never been oh, to. There's, so. there's, there's, there's not a lot of value in that for your clients either. No, that's right. Um, so I'm going to go up there and spend a good week around there. It's almost like I run a workshop on my own and this is the location. This is good for sunrise. This is good for sunset. This is great for Astro. The Milky Way comes up this way. Um, all those kind of things. So yeah, I'll be heading up that way tomorrow. Um, but it sort of got me thinking about uh, not just, you know, if you're running a business, but just in general, if you're going out to take photos and landscape photography, um, scouting and, and scouting your location beforehand is, is so important. Um, I think it's something that can really help improve your photography quicker as well, is that if you have a plan where you're going and not just rock up and try and, you know, do it on the fly, like this podcast and YouTube channel that we do. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if you, if you sort of have a location, you know, for example, Flinders Rangers, like the last couple of weeks, I've just been researching researching other photographers, researching on, on social media, researching what roads are open, researching, you know, using um, the good old photo pills app. I don't know if anyone's got the photo pills app. Oh, funny you should mention it because I was just about to say, right. uh, mention photo pills. If you've, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, this show is not sponsored at all. So anything, no. um, any oh, branding that we talk about other than the businesses that we run, mm. uh, any branding we talk about, we're just throwing them in because we like that stuff. Yeah, um, and it works. So if we, yeah, if we talk about it, we recommend it. Um, Photo Pills is an app that you can get on your smartphone. Yeah. And it's amazing. Um, I do you, do you went, use all the features of it? Because it's got a hell of a lot of features. I've used a lot of them. Um, yeah. Not, no, I couldn't, no, I wouldn't use all of them. Yeah. One of the main ones I use is the um, augmented reality with the stars. Oh, yeah. And it, it shows you. Stars. Correct. And yeah. but more importantly, it shows me precisely where the sun's going to rise. Yeah. Um, yeah. And because I love shooting sunrises and sunsets for that matter. Mm -hmm. And particularly down south where we are um, at this time of year, yeah. the sun sets so much further away in the, yeah. on the horizon. That's ridiculous. Um, we, we get a massive variance because uh, yeah. we're so far away from the equator. Um, so again, just to use that photo behind me as an example where that where that sun is setting, oh my finger is a bit. Where that sun is setting now, that 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 photo was taken uh, in summer. Well, yeah. um, now in and oddly enough, today with the, when we're recording this is the winter solstice, so we're smack bang in the middle of winter. Yeah. That that sun is nowhere near in the frame of this shot. It's way yeah. over that way, a lot yeah, further. Yeah. Um, 
and you get used to it in your own, own area. But when you go to somewhere new, like the Flinders Ranges, or I was yeah. out at Mungo National Park a month ago, yeah. um, I had no idea. Where's the sun going to set? Where's it going to rise? And when you're only there for a few days, having an app like Photo Pills is really useful because it gets you on the front foot straight away. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and, and same with down here, we get a massive variance in, in sunrise, sunsets. You know, summer we can, summer we're light by 4.30, dark by 10 o'clock in the evening. Yeah. But winter, yeah. winter it's almost 10 to 8, you know, back to court to five type of thing. So it's, yeah, so going up to a place, and I've never been to the Flinders Ranges before. They've been on my list for a long time to see. But, yeah, it got me thinking that, you know, you've really got to scout your locations and, uh, and, and it's not a matter of scouting or, or looking at other people's work to sort of go, okay, I'm just going to go get those shots. I, I don't work that way. I, I think to myself, well, that's a beautiful shot that, you know, X, Y, or Z's done. Beautiful shot that Brendan's done at, at Mungo National Park or whatever it might be. Um, but I also use that as a bit of inspiration to think to myself, well, you know what, I'm actually going to go and try and get something completely different to that or get something a little bit more unique. And um, so, yeah, I've had, actually the last two weeks, I've pretty much been... Um, invested heavily in the Flinders Rangers. Don't ask me where I'm going because I still don't know. But I've got uh, I've got a Google map. I've, I've marked all the places I want to go on my Google maps. And uh, so, yeah, I head up there, uh, heading out tomorrow, uh, catch the, the spirit of spew across the Bass Strait. I'll give you a wave <laughs> as I come past. Well, that's going to be yes. nice and smooth, apparently. apparently. So, um, so yeah. You're, so you're, li you're literally going to be 25 kilometres from me tomorrow. I'm literally going to pass you and give you a wave probably okay. around about Oh, it'll be probably mid morning the next day, I reckon, because we come overnight. So it's a nice. Oh, day. okay, right. No, well, don't wake me up. No, no. no. But uh, yeah, so I think uh, it's a really important if, for guys. Does that, that get are... you in? Does that get you into Melbourne sunrise ish? Yeah, it gets. Well, us hello, in. hello. Yeah. yeah, no, I can take a photo literally off the back of the boat if I'm <laughs> up that early. Um, yeah. But yeah, it sort of got me. I thought, you know, for people that are listening and people that are watching, obviously, and you know, obviously, most people are going to have an interest in landscape photography because that's mostly what this program is going to be about. Yep. Um, but if you really want to improve your photography, save yourself the time of asking around when you get to a location, get, have a plan. It doesn't have to be minute by minute, but have a, a map of locations you want to go check out and make sure you get there at the right time of day. Um, and I think it'll, it just sort of takes like 50% of the hard work out if you get there and you know yep. where you're going, what you're doing. So yep. yeah, a little bit of a tip just to uh, do a bit of research. Don't be, don't be lazy. Of course, you'll go to places where sometimes it just goes off light wise and doesn't matter where you are, you'll get a good shot. But um, yeah, for this, so yeah, this is the Flinders Rangers workshop scouting event, I guess you could call it. So Fantastic. And um, I mean, also when you go out to these locations, um, I mean, I know speaking for myself again, shooting the golden hour, sunrise, sunset, that sort of yeah. stuff. What I always say to people is give yourself more time than you think. So um, quite often I've been going to shoot a sunrise and then all of a sudden you realise, actually, no, it's 20 minutes further to drive there than I thought. Yeah. And then you get there and it's half over. And sometimes the best light actually happens up to an hour before yeah. the sun rises and definitely up to an hour after the sun sets, yeah. depending on the time of year. But um, yeah, giving yourself maximum time and that's where the scouting and your preparation comes into it. And like Cam said, don't, don't spend hours on it, meticulously down to the minute, but give yourself a bit of flexibility. Um, also, you're going to need time to scout perhaps foreground subjects that you yeah, might want right. to put into your landscape shots as well. Yeah. Um, I've seen that there's a few like uh, old farm buildings and stuff out. Yeah, there's some old, old sort of ruins and there's old windows. Fantastic. And... They make the best subjects. Yeah. And, and it's kind of interesting because I um, Tassie doesn't have, like we've got beautiful historic towns down here, but we don't. Got a few ruins lying around, but we don't have those sort of classic outback sort of ruins things. So just a few ruins laying around. Yeah, no, just laying like, around. Just laying around. Like we've got you know beautiful Port <laughs> Arthur and all those places. But um, yeah. but yeah, you're right as well. Like just touching on that quickly, um, I think a lot of people sometimes get a little bit confused when when you, when you're doing a workshop or something like that, or going out with mates. You're like, oh, let's go do sunrise, and people think you get there at sunrise, or hey, That's let's right. go shoot sunset. You know, down the beach there. Oh, we'll get there at sunset. No, you've got to be there. And I, I think, and I, I down here, it's a noticeable change. The, you're right. It's almost like the hour, the countdown from an hour before sunrise or sunset yeah. or after. Yeah. And the light just flicks, and it just starts getting nicer and nicer and nicer. So it, it, it's amazing. And it, and I've shot a lot of sunsets, and and who hasn't really? Who's who's into their landscape photography? But almost every time, I still get that little surprise of yeah. oh wow the light has arrived. Yeah, it does. It's, it's, it is. It's yeah. so noticeable, isn't it? You, yeah. You, and and I, I don't know how many times I've been driving a car and I've thought the same thing. I'm like, yep, crap. I'm, I'm meant to be there. 
40 minutes yep. away and the lights go on great and i stop the car yep. and try and get something there and then but um yeah. so yeah that's, that's um yeah have you ever go. fallen for the for, ever fallen for the old trick of leaving too early well that's the from a, from a sunset oh going home yeah going home early yes um yes. we are uh, many many times of workshops we uh people are like oh okay so that's it I'm like nope yeah we wait we wait till it's dark that's right because you'll get that and it's and it's something i don't think people realize especially with you know, if you look at the you know, the real world class photographers, landscape photographers, and you go, how the hell did they get that shot? That that shot, and we spoke about it last week quickly, it's fleeting moments. It might be yep. a two minute moment. Mm -hmm. And if you're not there and you're not ready, you're not set up, um, then you're going to miss it. So, yes. Yeah, uh, that's right. And and that it's more than just the, the act of taking the photo. It's actually getting to experience it as well yeah. and being there. It's it, yeah. it does something for you. It's awesome getting out yeah. there and, I can only reference back to the last sunset shots I did, which was at Mungo. Yeah. And um, I was there with my brother-in-law and we, we found, stumbled on a really great little spot for photos. And I'm yeah. looking at the photo pills app and I'm like, well, the sun's going to set right there, which happened to be exactly yeah. right behind this row of trees on the horizon. And, um, and then the light came yeah. and it's like, yeah, we scouted, we found the spot, we got yeah. set up and it came to us and we weren't rushing around. We, you know, and was, I, I, find, I find with that as well, and of course, we'll put some of your images up so people can see what you're referring to. Um, cool. But I find it, um, yeah, straight away. But it, like, you, you actually, I feel like the photos I take when I've planned and, you know, you do, it, uh, admittedly, you get lucky with the light. It could go good or bad. It just depends on the weather. But I find that when I come back and have a look at those on my, on my editing suite and I look at it, like I don't edit them as much because the light's perfect as it is. And, and you, you walk away with a sense of like a, it's a complete package. Okay, I did the hard work, got there at the right time, had the right settings, got a nice photo. And to me, that's more rewarding sometimes than just getting that lucky one out of the bag where you just happen to be the right place at the right time. But 100%. And, and that also goes, speaks to what we mentioned very briefly last week was getting to know your camera is vital. Mm -hmm. um, you know, knowing that this is how... I change the aperture. This is how I change the ISO. This is how I, you know, knowing where all that is, yeah. because we can sit here and tell you that, and, but everyone out there's probably got a different camera model, yeah. but knowing, so even getting your camera out every second day and walking into your backyard, you have to go somewhere and be nice if you could, but you don't have to. And you can take a photo of, you know, your garden, mm. but no, you know, and, and do it in, do it in bright, sunny conditions, do it in low light. Yeah. That basic little bit of practice makes perfect will go a long way towards uh, when you are out shooting photos and you, you, you know, you get your sunset moment or you get your, you know, when the light comes. Yeah. I love it. I, I love it. I, I do. I do a classic one on my workshops when I have people, you know, we've all lined up, you know, for example, behind us, you know, we all line up and waiting for the light and um, you know, it's like, you know, like I said, getting to know your camera and understanding how it is, but um, people will take a photo and like, Oh, wait a bit longer. I'm like, yeah, don't waste too much film. No, yeah. right. and, and it's almost like you, I almost try and teach people to shoot like it is shooting on film. Like don't just yeah. spray a thousand shots at sunset. Just yeah. wait, for, like just wait for those moments and press the shutter. And like you said, yeah. in between, sit back and watch it because it's enjoyable yeah. watching the world um, yeah, go that way. So yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, so moving on a little bit, um, great discussion point, by the way. I love talking about um well, particularly when you're going out to look for locations and stuff yeah. and new new places. I mean, because yeah. it just it drives you right. I mean, well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm sort of feel like I'm a little kid in the candy store at the moment. Like I've got to get yeah. up here because I know how yeah. good this region is. Yeah, and I, and it's almost like, well, what can I take away from this place? Like, I've done Tassie to death, and you know my photos get pretty well known for around here, but like I've never been to this place before. So it's like it's almost like an overseas trip. I've never been there. So yeah, for sure. For sure. And, and a fresh challenge. So it's great. Mm. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, which sort of segues a little bit, I suppose, into what we, another sort of discussion point we wanted to do tonight um, is just talking about our favorite landscape photographers. Now um, I might start if that's all right. I was going to say you go first on this one because. <laughs> no, that's right. Um, yeah. the, I, I follow a lot of landscape photographers on socials and, and all that sort of stuff. And I've enjoyed watching um I enjoy it when these photographers that I follow put out new stuff because yeah. it's always class. But there's one in particular that I've been following for ever, um, ever since I bought my first edition of Better Photography magazine, and that's yeah. Peter Eastway. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I 
think Peter's work is phenomenal. Um, so I'll put a I'll put a little link down below so you can check out some of Peter's work. Yeah, um, amazing. Met work. Pete once. Met Peter once at a, a photo trade show in Melbourne. Um, don't know him from a bar of yeah. soap, but I just wanted to walk up and say, hey, love your work. I think your photography is fantastic, and just shook yeah. his hand and said hi. Yeah. Um, check him out. Um, one of the, uh, I think he was a founder or, and definitely the editor of Better Photography magazine. Yeah. Um, shoots a lot of um, large format digital. Yeah. Um, and what he does very, very well, in my opinion, uh, is editing. His editing is stunning. Um, he's got a, a real world feel about his photos. Um, yeah, his composition's nuts. And, uh, yeah, no, I've been a big fan of Pete's for a long, long time. So yeah. go and check him out. And Cam, you got someone who yeah, you like well, well, speaking of Peter, he's he's almost you know regarded now as the grandfather of landscape. He'll probably shoot me if he ever sees me calling him the grandfather. But he's almost like the grandfather of landscape photography in Australia. His work is um, it's pretty specky. Um, and I've I've met him a couple of times through the AIPP things that yep. have been there. Um, yep. But uh, uh, touching on that as well with his editing, um, I actually watched. I think he had a series of um, photoshopping type of landscape uh, instruction things that he that you're able to download. And I, I watched a few of them, and I think I got a lot of him in regards to just seeing the light. Uh, there yep. was something something that clicked that he said uh, in one of those little sessions that he did. It's like you know exposing for that light and seeing that light and looking for it. And I think that was a bit of a turning point for me a few years ago now when when I when I saw that I'm like okay yeah I get it now I get that was like the light bulb moment like oh. Yeah. Okay, I get it. So yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's incredible. And he's actually recently just in Bruny Island down here. I just saw a thing actually today of he was yep. down here with a few other guys uh, flying helicopters around Bruny Island. Yeah. Well, so I mean, some. yeah, amazing. And yeah, yeah. I, I suppose, yeah, that, that's the other thing I like about the guy. He gets out there a lot. He does. Um, yeah. And uh, a very, very nice guy to boot. So yeah, he is. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. I've never heard a bad word and uh, his work speaks for itself really. So yeah. 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 What about, I mean, I'm, I mean, Peter aside, you obviously like Pete's work as well. Yeah, I like um, Pete's work. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit different in, in regards to following people. And I don't know, maybe it's me being lazy. Um, I don't think it's to do with not respecting the industry I'm in or whatever. I, I sort of found a few years ago that I, I was following quite a lot of people, but I found that really heavily influenced how I go and shoot things. And, I found that the easy way for me was just to really try and find my own style and find my own way of doing things. So I sort of made a conscious decision a few years ago just to, you know, I still look and still enjoy and really admire heaps of people, um, but I don't go out actively trying to find new work to follow and things like that. So call me stuck up. I don't know. Maybe it's whatever it is. Um, I just don't sort of face it that much. But uh, but for me, my, my favourite landscape photographer, it's, there's probably one or two. But I, I'll go with the, the Tasmanian legend, Peter Dombrowskis. Um, yeah. uh, for those who don't know who Peter is, he was a, a large format film photographer going back into sort of 70s, 80s and 90s. Uh, he had a huge deal to do with um, the damming of the Franklin River and saving that Franklin River from being dammed, which is down here in the west coast of Tassie. Now, if um, I'm allowed to copyright permitting, I will throw up that famous photo that a lot yes. of people attribute to the saving yeah, of Franklin, the, the, at least... Uh, at Absolutely. least bringing it to the fore in people's minds. Yeah, so that image is called Rock Island Bend, uh, which is, and this is the thing I love about Peter's work. Oh, he's he's actually worked, you know, speaks for itself. He, his composition is incredible. Um, but what what really inspired me to, to to like him was the fact that he's shooting large format film, uh, and a lot of these shots that you know we'll put a, a link to his work. You can go check it out for yourself if you don't know. But a lot of these work, work a lot of his work is you know it's four or five days walking. Or the Rock Island Bend one. I've done. I've done the Franklin River five times now. I think it is, uh, and that's six days down the river. So that's six yeah. days of rafting to get yep. a shot. Uh, it's obviously not the only shot he took on the whole trip, but that shot to become so iconic and yeah. uh, it's regarded as uh, one of the most successful political images of all time. Uh, yep. The sway it had, like that was what Bob Hawke pretty much got in power on the back of. So yeah, Peter's work. Uh, he's got a beautiful composition. Um, he, the sharpness all through his images is incredible. Uh, his foreground subjects are amazing. Uh, sadly, he he passed away. He actually passed away out while doing photographs up on the Western Yeah, Arthurs. yeah, uh, quite, quite a quite a tragic story, and and but yeah. definitely well worth a read if you can um, find that story. Well, what I'll do, we'll put it in the show notes. There's an amazing uh, documentary called Wildness, 
uh, which is a documentary on Peter Dombrovskis and Olegis Trakanis, who was almost like his mentor father figure when he moved down here to Tassie. Um, it's an incredible documentary, but uh, yeah, Peter's work's incredible. He's the only Australian photographer uh, inducted into the World Hall of Fame of Photographers. Uh, so he, he, is, he is the legend. His work still stands above everyone else's. And if I can shoot 10% as good as Peter, then my work is, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. But yeah, yeah. definitely go check out Peter and, and well, they're both Peters. There you go, Peter Eastway, Peter Dombrovskis. Amazing and and fantastic that um, uh, that he shot exclusively film because uh, he passed away of, I think before digital even took off. Was that right? Uh, he, it was nineteen ninety six ninety seven when he yeah, passed yeah. away. So so he was yeah. shooting film his whole career. Yeah, and he was shooting. Five, I've actually got and we might we might bring it up one day. But I've actually got the same camera he used. I've got a five by four uh, Lindhoff Technica Master Classic, um, and I still shoot a bit of five inch by four inch film. Um, and just to, um, I was away last weekend with a few friends up in the Tark line in the background here. And I took that camera and took some, you know, took about six sheets of film, probably screwed three of them up, didn't do the right thing. Um, but a few people watching me set up, they're like, oh my God, is this what he used? I'm like, this is practically the same system. And they're like, okay, so what are you going to do? I'm like, you know, I'm telling them, this is what I'm looking at, the composition, all this kind of stuff. 20 minutes later, they're like, oh, so when do you take the shot? I'm like, well, once we've done everything, once we've done all the movements, once we've got the exposure right, maybe just yeah. wait for that sun to go down a bit more. It's like, oh, wow. Um, and I actually, quick little story on the side, I actually bought some old slide film off a lady down here in Hobart off Gumtree and I uh, went around to the, she said, I'll come around. And sadly, her, her late husband was a photographer and she, she had a freezer full of this beautiful Belvia film. So I went around and bought the whole fridge of it because that's what, that's what you do. And um, I went around there and she, was, she said, well, maybe you'd be interested in this camera my husband had as well. It was a boxed, brand new Nikon FM2 film camera, almost <laughs> un unused. And anyway, she went on and told me this story that her husband knew Peter Dombrovskis and they went out shooting one weekend. And the, oh husband, came, the husband came back after the weekend and put his camera down and steamed into us, walked off in a huff and wasn't happy and she said you know what's going on he goes i'm never going out with peter again i'm never going shooting with him again she's like what are you talking about he goes he sat up he set his camera up on this river scene he sat there for eight hours and took one shot she goes i, I wanted to keep moving <laughs> i wanted to keep walking around i wanted to go there well you know he he stayed out peter stayed out for another two days this guy came home early so yeah he was really meticulous in what he did and patient and yeah his work is incredible so definitely check his work out but both peter eastway and peter dombroskis are and Peter Eastway actually did a tribute to Peter Dombrovskis. He walked into the Western Arthurs a couple of years ago. And there's another little show note we can put in there. You can do a, a link to um, sure. where he, he walked into a, a spot that Peter went to many times. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it's great. And um, great that um, without any prompting, both of us happened to mention Australian photographers. But um, there yeah. you go. Influenced, obviously, by these people. So, yeah. Um, so... We're definitely going to run over time on this, but that's fine. Um, I think we will go to uh, our running segment, which is yes. the Dear dear Cam. We, we really need music, don't we, for this one? We're going to work on that. I reckon Oh, it's coming. Babe. sometime oh. soon we're going to get some really production. cool. <laughs> our production team has been working busy last week. But very. All, all very one busy. of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy. This guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so um, we have a dear Cam. Now, if you would like to ask Cam a question about preferably landscape photography, but look, it can be anything really. Does it have love, to be photographic related, Cam? Love, life and the pursuit of happiness. Let's maybe okay. not get that deep. But yeah, All right. look, I yep. think landscape photography would be great. I think, um, I think any photography question could probably work. I think between the two of us, if I get stuck, you know, you might be able to help. But yeah, who, we'll see who, how we who, go. Who, who have we got this week? We've got Jim from Gisborne. Jim from Gisborne. Gisborne, Gisborne. good golf. Hello, course, Jim. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for your question. Gisborne, uh, about an hour north of Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah, Victoria. It's yeah. Yep. It's beautiful. Love, nice get, part of the world. They get really nice autumn colours up there. Is there they avenue? Do. There is avenues up there, like of old there, trees. There are, yeah. That's right. So the Avenue of Honour. Um, right. areas up around Gisborne, which honour the uh, the fallen Anzacs. That's very. Yeah. It's very cool, actually, and they normally used deciduous trees that go through all the colour changes. Yeah, anyway, exactly. we digress. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dear Cam, are you ready? I'm trying. Dear Cam, dear Cam, I've just taken up landscape photography. Do I need to purchase Photoshop to edit my photos? Hmm, that old chestnut. Um, so I would say no. 
uh, if we're being specific about Photoshop, I would say, no, I, I actually don't use Photoshop at all, apart from 1% of something that I do when I'm getting my photos ready for print. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say you don't need to purchase Photoshop, um, but what you probably do need is, is something like Lightroom, uh, which is Adobe Lightroom. Um, and if you look at the Adobe Creative Suite, Adobe actually package uh, Lightroom, Photoshop and Premiere Video, I think together there's a package and I think it's like 20 or $30 a month. So mm -hmm. times have changed a bit. Um, I remember when I used to, when I first started getting into Photoshop, you'd buy Photoshop for $700 and then you'd have to update it six months later for another $700. But it's all subscription now and it's all sort of online. And um, so I, I wouldn't say you need to Photoshop your images, but definitely you need some editing suite. So that could be Lightroom, Capture One. Uh, I think Apple Aperture is one that people use as well. Yep. Um, so, but I think it does help. Um, I get a few people in my workshops who are religiously against editing at all. They just want pure out of camera, JPEGs, no editing, which is fine. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're going to shoot landscape photography in RAW, um, the RAW file has a, has a hell of a lot of information in that you can tweak uh, and fix to make you know the shot look how you want it to look. So, yeah, I would say I, I have to I have to chuckle a little bit when people say I, no, I don't want to use Photoshop. I just want to use the JPEG that comes out yeah, of the camera, which, which is processed. which has been through an image processor <laughs> yeah. inside the camera. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. and I'm I'm totally with you, Cam. Um, I, I think you don't need. Um, a uh, Photoshop in itself, but some kind of photo editing suite or software is useful. Um, yeah. One one really cool one that I use a fair bit now is Snapseed. Um, right. Yeah. So you can actually import your photos from your um, digital camera. Yeah. Um, and Jim, if you've just taken up landscape photography and you've got yourself a pretty recent camera, you'll be able to Wi-Fi your photos now straight yeah. to your phone and use something like Snapseed, which Although I wouldn't recommend you use that if you're looking at getting your photos printed, I would definitely use it if you're just looking to get into um, how software can affect your image. Yeah. I think also, like, and we touched on it, I touched on it really briefly last time, is that it's that process of shooting, editing, and printing. So yeah. a lot of people think, well, I take a photo, that's it, it's done. Mm. Well, you know, you go back 30, 40 years, well, that wasn't done. You had to go and get it developed which is now your editing and then you have to go get it printed which is your printing so i think yeah. you know if you if you're taken up you know the fact that he said he's taken up landscape photography would indicate that he's got a passion for it that it, you know that jim's probably wanted to get a bit further into it so if that's the case then the editing is almost like step two of the process so you know practice like we've said practice religiously shooting and getting understanding your camera and your settings but then also practicing your editing and starting to get a style and you know, look, look at what works for your images. You know, you might find that you like a bit more saturation or a little bit less contrast, whatever it might be. Um, so I'd say it's, it's definitely a tool in the kit of photography is an editing suite. And then I guess it comes back to budget. You know, what can you afford to, to pay? Some people can't afford 30, 30 odd dollars a month for a program they're going to use once. Um, so yeah, Snapseed sounds good. They're, like I said, there's all other ones you can get. Yeah, oh, there's, there's heaps of them. Yeah. Uh, but I found over the last few years, Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom has almost as much power as Photoshop and as much yep. ability to do stuff to photos. Uh, and yep. it's fairly easy to use. So I, I'd say yes, uh, but have a look around, see what options you've got in regards to suites. And, and also don't forget that when you buy a new camera or if you maybe you get a second hand camera that they don't sort of supply a disc as much these days. They used to have no. a CD-ROM that would have your raw editor on that CD-ROM yep. uh, and would come with a fairly decent um picture editing uh package yeah. so uh yeah. i think when you buy if you buy a new camera these days it's a download so you'll go by when you register your camera with um the manufacturer you can download the software mm. to convert raw files into jpegs and that will come with some pretty cool editing software for you yeah. to dabble in without spending a cent it's come, it's, then, come a, it's come a long way from what uh used to have like you like you said you usually get something or a free download or a, a sample or a trial version or something which will do yeah. the job for you so, yeah. yeah. Good luck with okay. it, Jim. Hopefully. Nice uh, one, Jim. Yeah. And don't forget more questions. I don't mind questions. Those kind of if questions. If you have a question for Cam, <laughs> please comment below, send us an email, whatever you want to do, and yeah. we will endeavor to answer your question. Well, Cam will well, endeavor to answer your question next week. Do I get to phone a friend if I don't know the answer? So you're going to be on the road next week, Cam. I'm going to be on the road next week, but I'm thinking technology i actually this is one thing i did look at on my scouting is what the 4g phone reception was like around flinders ranges i'm thinking maybe 
if all goes well, maybe we can do a, I, we can do the next show and I'll be on the road up there with Flinders Rangers in the background, maybe. If you're not sitting in a tent or on in the, <laughs> in, in, in your four wheel drive, I'll be yeah. very disappointed. On the roof, maybe. Nah, you I, might I could, have to be. I could sit in the back of the Ute with an esky and just do a show. <clears throat> well, it might be audio only. We might have yeah. to literally phone it in. Maybe. We'll see how we go. I'm sure we can make it work. <laughs> For um, sure. So next up, you're going to do a bit of gear talk. Yeah. So this is a regular segment I'd like to include uh, in the podcast or in the show um, is a brief little chat about uh, the latest gear that's out there. Yeah, um, cool. And well, not necessarily even the latest gear, but just gear chat in general. Um, this week, I thought I'd uh, now, this is not sponsored. We, no one has said, please talk about this. No one's. We have, I mean, we have, we're, we have we're no done. sponsors. <laughs> we're one episode in, folks. Yeah. So yeah. I don't expect that, you know, we've had no one's come knocking just yet. But hey, I, I, I didn't know I had to beat them away from down here. There's people knocking on the door trying to give me sponsorship. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, sure. If KFC's um, a sponsor, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be all right. That'd be all right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyway, this week I would like to talk about a new release from Tamron. Now, Tamron are a what we call a third-party lens manufacturer. So, Tamron the, don't make cameras themselves. But what they do is make fantastic lenses. So, they make very good glass for cameras, and they have recently released the 11 to 20 f 2.8 for Sony APS-C cameras. Now, that's a mouthful. What's it all mean? Basically, an 11 to 22 millimeter lens is an is a ultra wide angle lens. So the way the millimeters work on your lenses is the lower the number, the wider the angle. And of course, this is 11 millimeters to 20, so it's got a little bit of zoom. This is what I'd call a wide angle zoom. Mm. Uh, 11 to 20. Its uh, lowest aperture number is f 2.8, which is pretty bright. Yeah. Uh, so just quickly, the lower the aperture number, the brighter. Um, the lens is so the more light it can let in and it's this, this, is, already, this is already sounding like an amazing landscape astro lens it's it's actually very cool mm. um now being f 2.8 it means you can use it not only for landscape but you can also use it for portrait work as well you're going to get a very shallow depth of field in your photo so you can use uh use it for portrait work but one of the coolest things i saw about it was how close you can focus to your subject mm. um if I, 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 I witnessed this as well yeah, um, I if I was organised, I'd tell you exactly how close it can focus, but it's it's real close. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna say like a centimetre or two. Yeah, I reckon it is. I think it's like 15 mil off the end. Tell you, what, you, it's, you it's keep really really close. I'll, I'll Google it and tell you. Okay, you Google that and let me know. Um, so the reason I bring this up is because uh, a mutual friend of Cameron and I, uh, Glenn Lavender. G'day, Glenn. I know you'll be watching and tuning in because one you've, only done six, you've only done six million podcasts already and we've <laughs> done two. So why wouldn't you tune into us? Yeah. Um, uh, Glenn popped himself over to Tasmania to Cam's place and um, yeah, flopped on, on his couch. Crashed on the couch. Yep. And thanks, um, thanks, had himself a, well, I guess you'd call it a prototype version of that lens mm. uh, he, because Glenn is a Tamron ambassador here in Australia, and uh, he was out chasing photo sample photos uh, using the new Sony 11 to 20 f 2.8 camera. Now, um, that uh, lens, I should say, that lens will uh, only work on Sony's APS C lineup, so their A6000 series. Um, which are brilliant little cameras, just by the way. Um, fantastic compact little units that uh, you might have to take awesome. You might have to repeat what camera that was. Are nice your, and small and then just Your sound went a bit weird. What, what camera? The was that Sony for? Uh, A uh, Sony A six thousand series. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So anything a so anything starting with an A six. So okay. Um, a sixty four hundred, sixty six hundred, uh, A six thousand. All of those right. models. Uh, this this lens will suit. Um, so Glenn went over to Tassie to chase some photos and then a week later he popped himself down to the Ballerine Peninsula in my neck of the woods. Um, I got up at um, bullcrap o'clock and went and um, joined him for a, mm. sorry, I just lost a little bit of power there, um, went and joined him for a sunrise and of course the days leading up, the sunrises were absolutely spectacular. <laughs> we had some beautiful conditions Then Glenn decided to come and ruin all that. That's funny. And the same we, thing happened. The same thing sort of happened down here. We went uh, looking for nice light, and it went the opposite way to Glenn. He's the biggest jinx of all time for landscape photography. But he also, <laughs> uh, we popped ourselves down to Point Lonsdale, which is a, a place that I haven't brought up in the podcast yet. But we will talk more about Point Lonsdale. It is 
my muse. I love going there to take photos. And he went down there and did some uh, awesome stuff with uh, a model and they got some brilliant shots. And the video, the promo video came out a couple of days ago. So we'll link that as so well. So with, with, with the Tamron, this is, I actually get confused because I'm a bit <coughs> silly like that. The APS-C is not full yes. frame, is it? Correct. So APS-C is pretty much uh, 1.6 times smaller in Sony. Right. It's 1.6 times smaller than 35 mil. So a full frame sensor is the same size as a 35 millimeter piece of film. Yeah. Whereas the APS-C size sensor, which is probably the most common sensor in a digital SLR over the last 15 years. So yeah. when um, the first DSLRs came out around the turn of the century, the turn of the century, don't you love saying that? Um, <laughs> around the turn of the century, folks, <laughs> yeah. um, when the DSLRs came out. So we're talking your Nikon D100. We're talking yeah. your Nikon D70. Yeah. Um, when those bad boys came out, they rocked the APS-C sensor. Yeah. Um, which is which, based on which is based on the old APS film, isn't it? Size. Correct. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's funny you yeah. say old APS film because there still, was. A, is that still available? Well, APS film came out uh, in the late nineties and then was yeah. completely killed off by digital. Yeah, right. So it was funny that they hitched their wagon to the APS-C uh, setup when now full yeah. frame is starting to really dominate, and yeah. I can see a time in the pretty near future where APS-C size sensors may even be faded out, uh, phased out completely, particularly now that right. they can make these cameras so small yeah, and include yeah. full frame sensors in them. But yeah. who knows, it might, it could go either way. There's still, well, there'll, they'll probably, there'll probably be a place from, I'd say for the next five years, but beyond yeah. that, I'm not so sure, given that now there's so many more full frame models. And of course, yeah. with more full frame models, the price goes down and down. Right. down. So with the 11 to 20, that would yes. not be, that would not be traditionally 11 mil to 20. That, mil, that is correct. Be... So, it's, it's 1.6 times. So it works out the equivalent focal length is around a 15 to 16 millimeter wide angle, yeah, okay. which yeah. is great. And a 16 mil wide angle is what I would use a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, I, I, I saw Glenn, as you mentioned, using this camera and the, there was no distortion at that wide end, which I thought was pretty impressive as well. So um, I just Googled as well. It's got a 15 centimeter macro. So it's, yeah, it's pretty good. Now 15 centimeters would be from the focal plane. So yeah, off the end of the lens, it's probably only about one and a half centimetres, as yeah, you say. So, yeah, he tried yeah. to... Glenn was trying to catch a bumblebees down here. <laughs> if you ever want to watch something amusing, watch a... How old... He, Glenn's a bit older than us. We call him... won't call him a grandfather, but try I'm and watch sure an old... I'm pretty sure it starts with a five. It starts with a five. You want to go watch Glenn chase bumblebees around lavender farms uh, <laughs> up in the middle of uh, Tasmania. Uh, it's good. You, you'll, certainly, you'll certainly see someone have a lot of fun. I did. Glenn Lavender in the Lavender. I love yeah, it. it so um, we are getting close to time. So yeah, I would are. just, we, in fact, we're over, but we knew this would happen during this podcast because we like to talk a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to quickly run over, um, uh, do a little, well, what we, we like to keep it to the end. We don't want to bang on too much about our own businesses, but um, Cameron, you've got uh, an Olympus Day coming up. Yeah, quickly. Uh, I've got an Olympus Day coming up on the 25th of July, 2021, uh, which is actually supported by Olympus Australia. So thank you to the guy and the teams up there. Um, so I've got pretty much a nice big fat bag of Olympus Pro lenses and bodies uh, that anyone can come along and try for free. You've got to pay to come along, but you can try the gear for free. Um, so what we're doing, we're doing a, how's that work? Yeah. So <laughs> we're doing a Olympus Day out of Hobart. So we leave from Hobart and we're heading up to Mount Field National Park, which has some incredible waterfalls, heaps of fungi. So this is mostly open to people in Tassie, unless someone from the mainland's down here on that weekend. Uh, and then we'll head out a bit further to the Southwest. So it's pretty much a day to put the gear in your hand. You don't, there's no pressure to buy anything. It's not a sales pitch. It is really just go out and enjoy Tassie's uh, outdoors and use a bit of different gear and if you like it you like it if you don't you don't fantastic um i've used olympus gear a lot and mm. i do like their gear i think it's fantastic equipment yeah. um i've used a lot of everything but olympus in particular particularly for traveling it's again yeah. that small compact setup so yeah uh, nice stuff and you also wanted to quickly mention your yeah Tarkine i've wilderness got a, workshop as well speaking yeah tark on wilderness behind us so i do a four-day workshop up there uh, and this is mostly, I get mostly mainlanders coming on this one, which is awesome because a lot of people haven't heard of the Tarkine. Uh, so that's running from August 27th to 31st. Uh, people usually fly into Launceston, pick them up on a nice bus, scoot out to the northwest coast, uh, spend four days hanging around a nice resort, 
and heading out to the coastline into the forest. So if you want to experience what's behind us and some of, if not the greatest forests in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, the Tarkine's one to, to jump on. So we'll put all the links and stuff behind uh, down below. Uh, yeah. Come along and yeah. And what have you got going in the shop? You got well, you give you know three only, cameras. You know, sure. <laughs> sure. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm giving away a bag full of Olympus Pro lens. No, no. no. Um, <laughs> that you're going to drop off on your yeah, way to the Flinders Rangers. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah. No, no. Um, we've got a little promotion going for anyone who wants to order their prints through camera and photo.com.au. Uh, we've got free shipping Australia wide, which excludes canvas prints. Sorry, can't do free shipping on canvas. They're too big and bulky and expensive to send. Um, uh, free shipping on all prints for anyone who listens to the show. So um, if you just leave a comment in the user section that you, um, sorry, in the comments section that you have heard uh, a shout out on the pod podcast that you get free shipping, well, I'll take the shipping off your, off your, um, off your printing. And we print everything from a six by four photo to a 60 by 40 inch canvas print or even bigger if you want to as well. Yep. So get in touch if you've got any um, is there, printing is, needs. Is there an end date on that deal? Because people might be um, listening, people might be listening to this like ten years from now, and you're like an old man no, still in the shop. No, no, no right. there's no end date. That's if you if you put if you put on there in the in the comments section that you, <laughs> that you heard this, yep. and I'm 78 years old which I probably will be when I'm running this thing. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, right. uh, yeah, no, look, let's say to the end of the year. That's fine. Yeah, right. End of 2020. The end of, end of 2021 is what we're in here, folks. Um, we don't, fantastic. Muck, around on, we don't right. muck around on this show. We, we go. We don't. No. And to that end, time to wrap things up. Thank Please. you so much for listening and joining us on the Down South Photo Show uh, podcast. It's been great to uh, chat with you again, Cam. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Yes, thanks, mate. A uh, very quick preview of next week. Now, Cam's going to be on the road, as we already know, so I'm already yeah. excited to work out where how that's all going to work, but we'll yeah, it'll I'm sure probably, something it'll will probably happen. Be a, it'll probably be a pub where I check in from. Perfect. If you So it's either yeah. your tent, your four-wheel drive, or, or a with a palmer and a pot in front of you. Yeah, that could work. Yeah. Palmer. Palmer. Not a palmy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, next year next year next week we're also going to talk about what gear you need to take good landscape photos um that'll be general but we're going to talk a bit more about gear yeah. uh and do you really need to spend thousands of dollars on top on models and um and i'm also going to talk thank you making a comeback uh, as the coronavirus restrictions start to lift so cam anything else to add uh no that's all good mate uh thank you everyone for all the support from last week and the feedback was great uh we'll put up all the notes in the segment there and we'll put up what's coming up next week and i'll probably check in from somebody else's state somewhere i don't know we'll see how it nice. goes Nice, fantastic. So don't forget to subscribe if you're on YouTube, guys. Um, just a little subscription down there. Subscribing is free. Um, do that. Hit the notifications button. Give us a thumbs up. And we will talk to you next week. Thank you. Thank you, Cam. See you Thanks, next mate. week. See you, guys. Cheers.